team, these teams obviously don't have much of a match history against each other. There's no storyline to build up. This is Team Secret coming into a big tournament, you know, and they gotta they gotta prove themselves like anyone else. Mm -hmm. So this is a chance right now for some of these tier two slash tier three teams to really see where they match up against some of the best in the world, and that mm -hmm. being Secret, one of the best out there. And well, they get a nice opener to lead things in. Probably one of the more dream starts. You get Chen for your puppy, and now Shadow Fiend for your Arteezy. Yeah, Secret, one of these teams that's very hard to um, to, to ban against with those first two bans because they just have so many core heroes that you don't want to play against. They ban out Wisp Sniper. I think those are two heroes you definitely don't want to play against. So leaving in Chen, Shadow Fiend, you got to pick your poison. Dusa, they go from a blast from the past. First pick, Brewmaster. Really don't see that too often these days. We've been seeing him more as like a fourth, third pick somewhere around there recently. Yeah. This um, is a throwback. Yeah, he's back. if he's in the mid, I think it'll be a little little tricky um, against Shadow Fiend. That's that's a tough matchup. Yeah, it used to be back in the day, Brew would be a first pick, first ban, and you see the other team immediately counter with like a Skywrath Mage, and they followed up with their Faceless Void, which, hey, Void could still be a possible option. Now picking up a Witch Doctor, there is bits of synergy there. Maybe Dooza trying to take a, you know, something out of the book that's been kind of dusted off a bit for quite a while and seeing if they can make the best of it here because you got to understand there probably is going to be substantial amount of pressure in the early game now that a Chen's on the field and Brew's got to be one to kind of be able to withstand that early onslaught or they look to kind of go aggressive themselves and add the pressure on someone like a Shadow Fiend here maybe with their own personal secondary support someone who can kind of get a lot of mileage on the map and keep the pressure built up mm -hmm. so next band's coming out the Jug as well as the Quap taken out by Dooza mm, Team Secret they ban out the Bristleback okay Thinking about this fourth ban a little bit. May have to delve Five into the reserve time. Remaining. Good to see all those L giggles coming out. I like it. They've banned out their own bristle back, which is something they like to go so for in their yeah, own Yeah, that's sort of peculiar. Like, hmm, are they really afraid of the bristle? So what are, what are the other common go-tos? Typically Queen of Pain, which has been banned out from Dooza. They banned out the Jug, something that's been completely ignored from most teams. But you know yeah. who's in there? It has not been touched. The Troll. Oh, the, the troll. OP Troll. Let me tell you, last night I had a series of games, and pretty much all of them had Troll in it, and I just hated it. I just don't like troll anymore. <laughs> I just am troll, done man? There with is the troll. Out, so. Okay, good. I'm done with it. We don't need to see it. It's got to go. So they get rid of it. So other fallbacks. S4 has been playing a lot of Wind Ranger late, lately, and that is still there. It works good against Bruce Split because you pretty much are going to be, you know, set up for an ideal shackle shot. But Rubik is going to be the secondary support grab here for Secret. All right. Ruby Tuesday. The, the uh... The one and only, one of the masters of Rubik himself, we get the privilege of seeing here. Mm -hmm. The K-God. Yep. Kuroki. Good old Kuro. They have a set for mm. him and his Rubik. He better be good. I, I love to see... I, I love that Kuro's back on support because we get to see him on Rubik. That was one of the first yeah. real heroes that I saw him on when I started casting that was just ridiculous. You know, you, he's just a, a top-notch Rubik player and... When he's playing core, you just uh, you never get to really. He said it. himself that he would rather play a core, but supports are just hard to come by. Yeah. So he's been relegated to the support position where he does a wonderful job. I mean, Kuroki, it's got to be one of those players who's good pound for pound. He can play multiple different positions very very well. In the early parts of Secret, when he was running like your Medusa, your AM, your single yeah. core farmer, he would definitely bring his own. And now when they've gotten their recent roster change, they've put him back on that support three. position. And, well, they've, they've found their way for sure. But Dooza, they Five want seconds. to be the ones to answer the problem that has been Secret as of recent. And they're throwing together a bit of an interesting lineup here. Their third grab is the Wraith King. And now Secret pick up an Earthshaker. Is this a core shaker? Yeah. A lot of teams have been rolling with the offlane shaker. We've seen Empire do it in the hands of Yoki. We've seen Willies or Will EZ do it recently. And I think Secret are going to be hopping on that bandwagon here. Yeah, the offlane shaker is pretty strong similar to that clockwork you can get some fun creep equilibrium, uh, equilibrium going your way you can usually find at least a fast level seconds, two pretty remaining. quick level three should work pretty well they could alternatively Dying safe lane the shadow fiend and put the shaker mid if they uh, want to try that matchup he should be able to do okay against the brewmaster lena the fourth pick for Duza. 
Wraith King Carry. I got to see that yesterday with Purge in the American division of Starlighter 12. Are we sure yet this is a carry Wraith King and not well, it could we're not, possibly a support leader? Yeah, we're, we're not sure. It, yeah. uh, for some reason, I feel like it's a core. That's um, fine, yeah. But this last pick will be very telling. With Lena and Wraith King, a lot of flexibility. You said that you Reserve got to time. cast a core Wraith King. Yes, yesterday? we did yesterday. I'm trying to remember which game it was. It it was it was okay. Wheel I mean, and was it that game? I have to look at the it. It was an right NA now. game. It was yes. North was, American team still from time to time can be pulling out core Wraith Kings. I know Leviathan in the hands of Shredder. He loves going Wraith yeah. King. He's gotten like a Radiance Wraith King Dyer from time team. to time and been able to make it happen there but yeah and that in that game it was against the doom so obviously one of the the better carries to go up against the oh, doom yeah. Um, it's good against this, you know, if the Shadow Fiend likes to go Yules and likes to be one of those that can delete a hero, Wraith King is going to be hard to go against. Lena is one of the Yules, a Yules picker herself. Oh, And yeah, Yules is good against a Yule Shadow Fiend because from what I've seen, you could quickly time a Yules after he Ten Yules is you. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though we're doing a little, a little bit of Yules on Yules action, you Five can prevent the Requiem remaining. from getting out in time and you could save yourself with it. So. Yeah, but if you're the Shadow Fiend at the same time, all you have to do is pump fake it. He's Once Lena Yules... Yule uses her Yules, then I was going to say Yules's, but I don't know if that's quite no. quite right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I hear it. It's, there are some yeah. mind games there. It, it is. It goes back and forth. It's, it's, it is it's a cheeky little thing you can do, though. Now Storm Spirit picked up by Secret, so that'll be their final core, and Weaver from Deuza Man, these Deuza, this Deuza lineup, look at it. Brew, Wraith King, Weaver, these are picks you just don't see very often recently, and they're kind of like pulling these things off, dusting them off, and letting them Letting them kind of feel it out right here. For Secret, though, I have to say, not a lot of big frontliners here, with the exception of maybe a core Earthshaker to be their initiator to lead things in, and Chen's army. You mm -hmm. have no one who's kind of like there drawing attention from the front. Lots of initiation game, potentially your blinking Shadowfiend, your blinking Earthshaker, and of course Storm Spirit, you know. The pick potential is certainly there. Oh, a yeah. thriving mid game is certainly in order here for Team Secret, but yeah. with this Dooza gaming lineup of these interesting picks, you really never know. Yeah, it's it's true. A decent game for the Weaver. Both him and Storms thrive in similar environments when there isn't a huge amount of lockdown. No silences for Secret, but they've got a lot of burst damage, so I feel like they can still deal with this Weaver okay. We've seen Weaver really fall out of favor. I, I feel like he suffers from Morphling Syndrome a little bit, where he just takes a little too much to come online, and the more trendy carries right now are those more like the Shadow Fiend that can do a lot early on and then also have a big presence in the late game. Weaver, a little bit more one-dimensional in the sense early on he doesn't really do a hell of a lot, very squishy, and can't really get combative until he gets that first round of items uh, to his name. All right, no surprises to going right into our first matchup of this best of three series. You're going to see Dooza beeline it towards the secret jungle. Secret coming into this match, they actually preemptively drew a circle. At the same mark we saw in the last series where it went to Disasterville for the dire side. This time, Secret feel a little bit more confident, confident rather than the level one game. Here they go, Zyori. They're going to oh, cross it's paths. Like deja vu all over again, but this time the Kush Monster's there to break it in half. Two on the high ground. A few down below. The Raze is doing a lot of damage. First blood goes to S4. Oh. Going to be taken down as well. It's a two for nil, but this time it's the Dire that hold it. Hello. Very nicely done. How Weaver. are you? On the run, Axmo gonna live, but what a start for Team Secret. First blood goes to the Storm Spirit, and the second kill goes to Mr. Steal Your Girl. I believe that's Artur Babayev on the Shadow Fiend off to a great start. That is just something you should expect. I mean, Secret knew they wanted to come. They had sentries on hand for Puppy for when they were gonna be inevitably moving into the jungle. Dooza, they go into the dark and were unfortunately welcomed with a nasty surprise. Most of the secret squad there on the high ground ready to go. So, you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know really what you could do to play it different if you're Dooza. Maybe look for a smoke play, come in from a different angle, a different side. Yeah. But that's not the play you want to make, and now you hand over a really nice early boost. Especially team secret. walking into a shaker. If there's any other support there, that can go completely differently. But having this to block out the high ground where the team's split in half, that mm -hmm. is just hard to deal with. You, If you don't have a strong captain that says either a, a bold retreat or a bold commitment, you end up in that half your team runs in, half of them run out, and you're in that little choke point. It's it's dangerous. I can't quite remember what the bands were exactly on the side of Secret, but this is where I feel because they clearly are going to be going with more of a support-sided Wraith King. Yeah, maybe they considered Ancient Apparition in this. You got Chen, who's got the heal and sustain that you could have gotten rid of. Plus, Ancient Apparition works beautifully in the laning phase with Weaver. They did not ban out the Ancient Apparition. So it could have been something to consider, but Wraith King seems to be something they're more comfortable with here in the hands of at least Follow Christie for now as they go with early harassment dives onto uh, the Kush monster. 
Who so, is that again? Zai? I think that's Zai, yeah. yeah. So Zai's playing a core shaker here, it looks like, in the safe lane. Down bottom, they'll do a lot of damage to Zoof on the Brewmaster. Good body blocks from Kuro as S4 tries to chase him down. He does have a static remnant. There's the telekinesis. This should be another kill. Make it 3 to nil out of the gate as this offlane storm finds another kill with the support of the Rubik. Oh, man. S4 off to a dream start. He gets that first blood to lead things in, comes into his lane, set up uh, a, the big bully. And continues to be one here. He's got the early recipe for a soul ring, so without a doubt, the bloodstone could be on his agenda. And with a start like this, he might just blitz forward for the bloodstone and try to get charges mm -hmm. early on and be a, a real big nuisance. Yeah, a couple different options for S4 here, but finding all this early farm will definitely bode well. And conversely, slowing down the Brewmaster, you put him in the safe lane because you want to secure that fast blink dagger, and I don't think he'll have quite that. Dooza with the aggro try. Wraith King Witch Doctor Weaver. It's sort of a clunky tri lane. You've got two good yeah. supports with really great stuns for fighting, but then this Weaver who can do some follow up damage, but so far, 1v3 going pretty well for the Kush Monster. Yeah, I mean, I was talking about the possible trade-out of AA for Wraith King, but maybe if they even did it instead of the Witch Doctor, at least you'd have the Wraithfire Blast to help lock down with a Cold Feet and work yeah. from there, but, uh, you know, this is all just theory crafting for now. It's them trying to deal with what they got in this tri lane. Now they're going to make the dive. They go on to the Kush Monster. Mr. 388, is he going to be taken down here? Right clicks, Maldix is going to even connect here, uh, but it's only level one. He needs more attack damage. Fissure going to fly out. This could, per this could save him. He has a salve to heal up thereafter. And Zai should be fine. Oh, oh the there it is. Line. Gem Knight, they catch him out. Salve going to be used and going to be stopped. Oh, they're going to get him. Okay, if they can find him. Got a totem. So he's creating oh. a lot of space here. Hits him with a totem. He will die to the Weaver eventually. They're going to have a little slugfest. Do as much damage as he can. Axmo gets the kill, but that takes them a lot of effort. And that's time that Weaver's not really farming. Still a kill is great news. Oh, Zai making the most out of it, it feels like. Puppy looked like he tried to get him stuck in there but because he had the Sakuchi he was able to walk on through that little tomato creep and, and be fine. Looks like we're going to have a bit of a lag hiccup here for the secret squad. We'll wait out that bit of a hiccup and get back and underway but you got a 1-3 to three to lead things in Dooza do get themselves on Whoa, the board and I yeah, well, yeah I did as well. It looks like so. this. Uh, oh look at the manly PA here. Look at those mutton chops. Got the, my the, the Hugh Jackman random, special, yeah. I like to call that PA right there. Ah, oh, it does look like Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Skinny Hugh Jackman. It's a lot of hair, man. Look yeah. how big that braid is. Yeah, it's 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 a little funky. It's an interesting And like the set. skinniest waist you've ever seen. It's not my favorite set. It is she is a little top heavy, isn't she? Normally that's something a lot of people complain about in their women, but yeah, I can see it being a bit of a problem I complain about it with here. my digital women. Yeah. My IRL women, not as much. But yeah, The immersion is just not there with a chat like this. Yeah. Well, hopefully the server has not completely dropped here. But not feeling so good. Yeah, it's, it's an awkward start. I'm making the best of it. The nice thing is that... Dooza do recognize that they can be a bit more aggressive with attempted ganks like that, even through the tower, because who's going to come and help them? You know, I mean, Puppy's not going to really abandon the jungle this soon to get back in okay, and like uh, make back. it started. But yeah, everyone's slowly reconnecting. It looks like this the uh, the valve server might have pooped itself a little bit. Oh, Sparky the Wonder Hamster! Oh no, they forgot to feed him again. He's got to get back on that wheel and get running. Well, Brewmaster, he's being telekinesed right now, but there's no graphics. It looks like he's just flying on a broom. Slightly phallic imagery there, but still a very odd, odd Wait, time. Wait, what? Let me see that. Look at this Brewmaster going to showcase mode. and Ooh. He's, <laughs> he's happy to be here. Well, he looks happy right now, but he's going to be very sad in a moment when he comes back down from telekinesis right into a remnant from S4. Yeah. And S4 has a soul ring ready to go. He's he's taking a, a page out of the, the new non-Vortex build Storm Spear where you just go for raw damage. And when you have like a Telekinesis and something to work with for your lockdown, it's, it's not too much trouble. And Brew could have trouble getting away. Has Clap ready to go. Could slow them down quite a bit. But S4 is level 4 and Brew is level 3. So... Yeah. Could be hard. Brew Could is be. really in strong city. He doesn't even have boots yet. And um, he's if he doesn't die here, he'll be pushed back. He's only got one tango left. I think regardless of what happens here, they are sacrificing this Brewmaster for the good of the Weaver. And at least Weaver is farming. At least he's killed Zai once now. So that's a step in the right direction. It looks like Puppy having some trouble reconnecting here. 
Man, can't we just have like one day of good servers? I feel like every <sighs> single day there is some kind of an issue with somebody getting DDoSed or somebody's computer going slow yeah, tell or me about servers it, dumping. There's just an array of issues and it's just a little sad. It's a little silly, unfortunately, little but... Little... Come on, can, internet. What, what can you do about it? What Gosh. can you do? We need, to just, we need to move to a fiber hood so we can get that Google fiber. Yeah, they just need to take over the world. Yeah. They want to do cell service now too. Did you hear about that, Google? I believe. I mean, Google wants to do everything. They, they, they have want cars, to, they cars want that to drive own themselves. Every internet piece of data imaginable. Like, can you imagine? You like wake up in your Google bed. I got my Google phone service. My my <laughs> my, my Google wife. <laughs> my Google bed, dude. That's that my is Google the Google Butler. Dream, I think. I think that's. Right. We're gonna switch to the Google camera car. feed here. We're gonna be good little boys. So you're gonna have to stop slouching. Dakota's Dakota's <laughs> in lounge mode here. He's just like, like full lounge mode here. <sighs> well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Google is, that's their, that's their game plan, man. So I, I wonder if there's still people out there that don't understand the Google business model and they wonder, why are they giving all this stuff away for free? Look at all this free email I got. And little do they know, the Google because Drive, they're yeah. collecting all of your data and selling it to people for a premium so they know how to market to you. Why do you think when you go on Amazon, it's like, hello, sir, are you interested in toothpaste? I saw that you might have purchased toothpaste on another website. Yeah. Do Let do me get that? your tinfoil hat over here real quick. Dude, it's serious business. <laughs> Think about it. Google has the, the corner on the market with Chrome now. Yeah. How many people use Gmail? You've got Google Voice. You've got all these other services. They just, they, they've got a but lot the, of data. That's all great stuff. It is great stuff. Their drive is beautiful. Their mail has been fine. I love it. I I'm think sure their internet's trade. the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Their cell service would probably be great. <laughs> the it's cars great. are apparently never crashed. It was only, the only crash that their Google cars had was with someone behind the wheel actually <laughs> the using it. The only time it. a human touched it is yeah. when it crashed. When right. are we going to have a Google airline? That's what I really want. I feel like that could be... But by that point, they'll probably have like Google teleport pods. Google hovercraft, you know? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, let's say they had... like we, Let's flash, flash forward here and we have the technology. Okay. And you had years? two options. How they still decades? have... I don't know. Like, however long it takes. Let's okay. say 20 years. All right. And there's still planes for flying. Okay. So you have the option to kind of go on your airline. Maybe they reduce the flight because they've brought out teleportation. And you could teleport directly to where you want to go, but it costs like a shit ton of money. Like, like $2,000 oh. to go... From California to New York. Th that's not a shit ton for instant travel. Like you just you walk in the portal, you, come you can out only the bring other side, one bag. Only bring <laughs> for two grand. Oh, dude, I feel like they would, they would sell out. They would sell out. Five grand. You think that'd be too much for California to New York or mm. vice versa? California to New York. For one person, five grand instant teleportation. You don't have to worry about flight or anything. Of course, like all that's the one percent are going to be about if it. You're, it's more going across continents. If you could go across continents for five grand like that instantly. Dude, for yeah. some people no, that cross continent's gonna be like an easy twenty k. An easy twenty k, dude. Some some airline tickets cost that much. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. I mean, first for like class, two grand. Yeah. Yeah. You two can, three grand. Well, yeah. even like the 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 lounging seats, like the the layback ones. You know, the the really yeah. nice ones. Those can be upwards of like you know fifteen k, twenty k, depending on where you're going, what airline you're flying. So, you've got like the the time efficiency of teleporting plus the comfort of you just walk into your meeting without having to. That would be. Can you imagine if you could just teleport to another time zone? Would there, there be jet, jet lag? Would there be jet lag? I was just thinking that. I feel like there. I has, mean, there, there would be, be instant jet lag because, like, yeah. I mean, unless you took the day ahead of time to adjust your Acclimate, schedule. Yeah. This is never happening, know. by the way. Unless <sighs> Google gets it gets it together, I guess. Yeah. It's a fair trade. My point is just nothing. There's nothing for free in this world. By using all those free services, you're giving up your valuable data. You are valuable as a source of data. They want well, to know what you're technically free. Stuff. You're just sort of something's happening. It's free-ish. Yeah. You think it's free. That's that's the illusion. It's free. -ish. Oh well, dude. If I get great, e <laughs> if I get great email and people out there find out that. Oh well, dude. You know, I like. Oh, I don't know. What a business model, man. I love it. I love that Google can build this brand so that like most, you know, you think about like Instagram or Facebook and how people are like, I don't really like them using my data, but then you go to Google and they do the exact same thing, and it's like. But I love Google, but they give me all this great stuff and Facebook's useless. So it's like they've built this paradigm where even though they've got the population over the barrel and they're raking in billions, we all still love them. What a yeah. damn, dude. That's the dream. Apple's almost the same way, too. A little bit, yeah. People are kind of like, I don't know how, how hip I am with Apple anymore. Apple's weird. You know, I'm starting to like more Apple stuff. I still don't use the OS, but I have an iPhone. I have an iPad. I use iTunes as my primary music catalog. I just DC'd again. Looks like the servers are really poop in the bed here. So we'll try to reconnect. Puppy still has not been able to reconnect. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully we don't have to cancel this great matchup, but God. Or postpone suck. it rather, not cancel it. But yeah. 
Still yeah, I'm sure Secret admins, wouldn't want to. So. They've already had like a really nice start here, so. Hopefully we get back underway. Meanwhile, if you need any uh, spare game codes or any digital goods, G2A is where it's at, my man. Esportsbets.com. Foresight, passion, and calculation. So wow. I could do the next voiceover. I'm ready, dude. I've heard that video so many times, I feel like I could recite like half of it from memory. Do you think that if you had the opportunity to do that, you would be able to nail it and you wouldn't hate it after like the three times you heard it's it? It's hard to say. Every time I have not done that much like I don't know, voiceovers or voice acting, whatever you want to call it. I've only done a little bit. I we did it at Starlight, remember? We did it at Star Ladder. We had to do that the was, team introductions. That was fun, except like they handed us a sheet in broken English and they were yes. like, here, this is this this is the read. So I read it, I'm like, all right, we're gonna have to change a few things. And they go, oh yeah, sure. We thought that you would try and update it and do your thing. So you're like sort of going off this broken English and then putting in your own flair. It was very, it was challenging, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But I always feel like I sound better then I hear it back. Like when I did the voiceover for that's the, always how. That's like I don't know what it's called, but that's like the whole like in ear thing. Like you hear yeah. yourself like I sound pretty cool, and then you hear yourself in recording like oh I sound like See, a bitch. But I don't get that feeling. For I casting sound terrible. Anymore. Like I used to feel that way with casting, but now we've got better mics and stuff. And if I watch a rebroadcast, yeah, that's what I sound like. You know, I don't feel like it sounds that disproportionate. But like when we did that Starlight, the Starlighter voiceovers, especially on the video with the Slardar set, yeah, I did one read, and they said okay, that was pretty good. Do it a little faster and with more passion. So the second one, I was just like, <laughs> and Slardar, we'll have a set with particles. And then you listen to it, it's like, yeah. and Slardar, we'll Exactly, we'll in my head, I'm like, damn, like, that sounded uh, really fucking sick. And I listen back, I'm like, damn, I sound like an Oompa Loompa. What the hell happened? <laughs> Did we crank up the bass on this thing or something? Like, Jesus. Like, What's happening? Where's the vibrato or something? Yeah, like, I'm feeling yeah. like I could do movie intros here, and then I listen yeah, to it, I'm I like, like I shouldn't do children's books. Can you guys books. use the EQ and like in the post really make me sound cool? Because I feel like I sound like a member of the Lollipop Guild. I, I just, so, I don't know. One Slardar. One trident to rule them all. I don't know. I uh, I would like to do more voiceover work though. I've always thought that that would be yeah. really really fun. Yeah, it me seems too. Like value. I, I mean, I don't know exactly how the pricing goes, but I feel like it's value time. I've always heard that actors like, um, like the like Billy Crystal or Robin Williams that do the voiceovers for yeah. Disney movies, yeah, that that is value town where they get paid oh, yeah. a huge amount of money and the work relative to doing a regular yeah. movie is like a third. It's challenging something. though because. In normal acting and stuff like that, you have someone to work with mm -hmm. in-house and you can bounce that energy off each other. Yeah. Voiceover work, you just do all your stuff. You just, and you maybe chilling. maybe the producer will like read the other person's lines, mm -hmm. but you're not getting the, the whole kabang. It's just like, yeah, I'll be there in a moment. And then you have to like use that and make yeah, it make it like true. a final cut. It's it's hard. You're having a conversation with yourself. And you're repeating it. and repeating and repeating and you have to make it different mm. each time and It sounds fun though. It's something I'd love to have an but opportunity yeah, no, to try I, in a more, would profe be. A more professional style. I mean at Starlighter they kinda of said, All right, good, try it again. I'm like, all right, is that good? They're like, Yeah, sure, we'll make it work. You know, it's a little it's not quite the same as doing it. And then it you hear it, and next thing you know, video. it's the next Corsair Gaming, and everyone's making fun of you, and it's over. Yeah, Corsair Gaming. The esports bets video that L D did though was a, a little rough. Apparently he did multiple takes. And they chopped it up, and he didn't really send the the selects. He just sent everything, and he didn't like some of the pieces that they used. So some of them, were his his esports bets were his his foresight, passion, and calculation. And at parts, it sounds like he's making fun of the video. Where he's like, "Earn real money," and you can tell. Like, you know, I'm just picturing him like, mm, toil, that toil, shit bubble, face trouble. grin. <laughs> mm, earn real, real money, money, yes. Yeah. I've got an earn right here. Hmm. Oh, disgusting. Uh, full sellout, boys. Uh, well, so touching base. This is this is one of those things. Like I don't even know if they can. I mean, we're not the admins for this. So I don't, we don't know, know if they're on. counting. We the have clock, absolutely this no is, power. This is sure. clearly not on the players end or our end. This is a Valve server end thing. Um, yeah, usually the pause limit is about ten minutes for Starlighter. It might be fifteen. We're coming up on that window. Um, if there's some way that it can be proven that this is like a network issue or something like that, it might be a, a little different. Um, but we'll see. I don't know why. Puppies why don't you hit buttons on this thing? Reconnect. Let's show. Is there a schedule? Is there well, rosters? Uh, we can. Is do there that. crabs still? Did they did they up. remove all the fancy? Oh, you got crabs. Let's see here. Uh, where are, where are the crabs? Let's see. There they are. There they are. Oh. Yeah, they're down. Right. Crabs. All right, we gotta wait for the thing to update here. It's a little slow. Come on now. Come on, Krabby Patty. There we oh go. Oh my god. Whoa! Hey, one. And Look then, at wait, that guy. Wait. Whoa, is that a knife? Line him up and chop him down. Whoa. Whoopser. <laughs> and Losers. then you can just get a blitz crank in there if you really want what to. What we need to do, oh, we need a way that I could trigger those. So that because you're on camera. You know, we can't have fun with stuff like that because you gotta, you know, do wow. the camera and everything. Look at these pictures. Look at Undershock. Is that a is that a weapon? Who's is, Weck looks like he's like four years old. Yeah, that is not the best. This guy challenge. Well, then you Sumail. got Limbo, who's just like, you don't want to know my secrets. 
these are some handsome guys right here, and they're ready to play some Dota. Yeah, it's a very candid shot of Zai. Look at him; he's just in that zone of. Mm. You do not want. He to looks see like my a mother. yeah. He, he looks like a. You straight do not shooter. want to be matched up against my broodmother. Stone Cold, right there. Yeah, he's a Stone Cold. Him killer. and Funic, man, they have game faces. That's mm. for sure. They have game faces. Yeah. Not like RTZ. Well, let's either. take a look at team number one here. Let's delve into the production features. A Boom. Little bit. Team secret. There There's they are. No secret. They're freaking good. And it's no secret. That's that not. No talent. <laughs> yeah, no that's your no team. secret. That's not the team. Okay. <laughs> hey, did Secret get a new logo? Is that their? Uh, yeah, this new is logo? this that's is nice. the newer logo. Newish, it's yeah. pretty cool. Seventy-eight percent cool. win rate. Some baller stats here as they've played pretty well in Star Lab. Wisp puck. Tidehunter, Apparently Elder Titan. Titan. Star oh, this is this is Star Ladder play. Yes, this is Star That's Ladder a, yeah. lifetime statistics. This is what yeah. Star Ladder loves. Oh, oh, we're going, we're whoa, going. Whoa, we're we got a game again. Game here, oh, showing oh. game. Let's do it. Okay. 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 Here we go. All right. Oh, bottom so, lane. Bottom lane. What happened? They're making the go oh, onto oh, Zoof. Yeah. Zoof's in trouble, Brew. You forgot about it. We all I forgot did. about Zoof. it, but Ooh, it's good. He lives. He okay. made it away. All right. All right. Good. I can't believe we made it over that hump. Yeah. All right. So puppy able to reconnect. Good news, bears. How are the other lanes doing? Mid seems to be pretty even under shock and Arteezy farming away. And within a couple of CS of each other, Lena doing pretty well, harassing Artor pretty aggressively, but still able to hold his own in the lane. Looks like Puppy finds himself a Wild Wing Ripper in the jungle. Nice, uh, efficient farming here. Already level four, holding on to a couple skill points, only two in the Holy Persuasion. Looks like Puppy, despite being DC'd, off to a pretty good start in the jungle. In mid lane, I gotta say, Undershock not doing too bad, considering Arteez, he had the bit of a boost early on with that big level 1 engagement, and he even got a kill. Not the first blood, but he got the second one thereafter. He's matched on CS, and Undershock is definitely keeping the pressure on him with this Lina. Lina could be one of these heroes that a lot of teams consider going to when you're stuck in this matchup against a Shadow Fiend. Yep. So, checking in on the other lanes. Yeah, we're still very early in here, so not much has happened. This try lane for Dooza, the aggro try against the solo core shaker. They've picked him off once. So far, the Kush monster, aka Zai, has done a pretty good job making space when they've tried to dive him. Uh, already halfway through level 4. So, all things considered, having a pretty good time secret more than making up for it in this off lane where they are completely shutting down the brew and S4, getting pretty close to free farm. Already 1 0 and 2 in terms of his KDA. Here we go. Another go on to Zoof. Kuroki starts off with the telekinesis. They have the overload. It is this new storm build where you don't go vortex. This is how storms have been doing it. And maybe limits a little bit of kill potential here, but. Still, Zoof force backed out of regen. Kush Monster up top. He's getting dove here, Dakota. Yep. Oh, man. Three on one. No oh, one's going to be the there. Cast Maldic. Is back. Yep. He's That's done for. He is done for. So, That's just hey. Bad luck. Dooza putting in the work here. Top lane to make up for a bit of a staggering start, knowing that Chen's going to be occupied in the jungle and help is nowhere near as they're occupied bottom lane. They're trying to make him pay, and we are out of the game. All right. Come on, Slark. Oh boy, I really wonder how that engagement went. They were making a dive again onto Zoof there in the bottom. So, Bru, will he be alive when we get back? Did all the players DC? The answer is to come in a moment's notice. Every time you say Zoof, I, I feel like you're about to say Zeus, and I instantly think, there's no Zeus. Oh wait, that's the Bru. Yeah. It's very confusing. Zoof. Zoof. I like that load screen, man. You got the cur that courier looks very angry. Yeah. It's got nice teeth for a donkey yeah. courier. I don't know how my my uh, load screen got put on. Oh, I need to turn on the star ladder HUD, too. Shit, I forgot. I should have done that during the pause. I forgot. Mm -mm -mm. Now we might have a pause here where we can take a look at it. Unfortunate. But wah, this wah, is the bed wah. that we lie in now. <laughs> Come on, Slark. Dark packed off this lag. Hey. You know, Slark's teeth really don't make a lot of sense. He's got this, like, snaggle tooth. Why would they here. make sense? Yeah, but look at this one. Like, why? Who, who has teeth tooth. like that? Is it from eating all those fish? This, the fish on his shoulder has nicer teeth than he does. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> oh, I'm right, in, and in. the game is paused. Lena's dead, was dead. Bottom lane. Zoof has some life. Holding his own. Everyone's getting back into the game. So it was obviously something across the board. But looks like uh, looks like overall everyone's been able to reconnect back into the game, and we should get underway. So just kind of analyzing what the hell's happening here. S4 is nearby from this witch doctor. He's got eyes on this six-minute rune, which will be popping up from both sides. So S4. Let me double check here. I got to report that, that in-game audio isn't working. And look at that! It's a bump by. It's working. Come look, on, man. Any, you know, remember, guys, you probably need to switch the broadcaster slot. Like, go to someone else, come back to us. But you know, it's definitely working. I just saw you do it. I see our mixer board. Everything's lighting up. 
Yep, but everything's it, you good. Know, I wouldn't be surprised. Apparently, if... the report came from one guy in Twitch chat who was probably just trolling. So we're not yeah, going to. Okay, gonna thank you. That one guy. Yeah, yeah. You it, need, uh, I need to put on my Star Ladder HUD, though. Let's see. Can I do that real quick? Yeah, you got time. Let's we're still see. paused got, over here. So my armory. I'm pretty sure I have one. Star Ladder. There's a lot of hats you got HUD. there. This is the season 10 HUD, but okay. Put the player load out. So that's going to. Does that. All right, we have no, to you have to do it. You can do it right there in game, can't you? How do you make it update? Oh, make it update? That's yeah, a, I think no, you have to wait till so. the next game before it updates. All right, well, for next game, we'll have the proper HUD. Sorry about that, folks. What if I reconnect with the HUD on, and then maybe you can switch to it? I don't know. From the uh, in-game oh, okay. shared content? I don't know. I don't want to risk it right now. Yeah. The not. way this is going, I just dis I disconnect. There's a chance I couldn't make it back in. Yeah. Whatever. It is what it is, so... All right, well, I guess so we'll go Google. back to our pretty faces here. Hey, Hi. hello, friends. Hi. Hello. Uh, give me a moment here. I got to tab into something else. Ugh. Well, we got to talk about Team Secret a little bit. We did get to talk about Team Secret. If Team you want, we could. All let's, right, we got to switch let's back show, to the, Let's show uh, right our Duza squad what they've been rolling with in All recent right, so Star Ladder history. What they're Team 2. Okay. Yeah, Come on, yeah. Team 2. We can do it. There we are. All right. Star Ladder TV. Boom. Limbo, Zoof, Axmo, Weck, and Undershock. Yep, what a yep, scary yep. lineup. The logo is pretty cool. I like the Duza. Yeah. I've, I, you know, Duza's pulled out some upsets in their days. I've, I know they've been off the radar, at least from the games I've gotten to see. But they're looking to keep their keep their name, their strong logo strong. <laughs> their strong logo strong. Okay. So do they not have any stats here? Is this the no, what else what else they got? I don't see any stats. Not last time it just rotated over and the, the stats oh, went. Okay. I think, right? Team one. Yeah, see they've got this cool lineup. I guess that's what happens when you don't have any history as a team. Team statistics error, okay. <laughs> well, that's guess great. Uh, yeah, there's not too much else here. Uh, I guess we can compare some players. We could like compare S4 and Limbo. Nope, I got a player statistic error. Oh, we can't compare anything because they don't have any stats. So, the short answer to your question, Dakota, is no. Well, we I can look at cool that. Well, let's we look at that here. Dota, and you can see the last time a Dat Dota recorded Dooza game was back in May of 2014. Yeah, that's wow. that's over. That is a really that's long a long freaking time, that time is, ago. That's like 10 months. Ago. Almost a year ago. Yeah. The last time Duza is on record, at least worthy of uh, a Dat Dota. Unless I'm looking at the wrong squad here. That's not even their logo. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking at the wrong squad here. Well, it could No, Duza Gaming, right? Yeah, this is them. Let's look at who was in the matchup here. Captain Love, Iceberg, Capron, Legion, Limbo. Limbo is the only uh, same one, right? I think so. Limbo. So this is like a pretty new... Unless some of these are names that have changed. I don't recognize Iceberg. Capron is a name I recognize, but uh, I'm not sure where he ended up. Looks the like last match was against MYM. Yeah, like I said, MYM back in... ESL Frankfurt, Frankfurt qualifiers. Qual. Oh so, God. you know, these teams, they're 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 dusting off the Dota gloves <laughs> for Star Ladder here to get back into it. What what an opening day and an opening first match for Duza. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Star Ladder. Listen, you're going against Secret. Yeah. So... Have a good breakfast. Have, have, have a good breakfast. Sorry, I'm uh, tabbed out here working on getting all of our, our stuff set up. That well, what are you doing over here? To us here. Oh. Uh, we're working on some... Fancy production. Let's see. Crap. Which scene did I click on? Man, this is... We're about to just do this production value style here because... As far as in-game goes, they want to try. They're going to be trying here momentarily. They could... Com, Whoa. The best video game store okay. ever! Sorry. Stop yelling at me! <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, sorry. Jesus. Whoa. We're going, we're going, intense. we're going. Oh, God. Oh, wait, I'm on the wrong... Okay, here we go. I was going to say, that's our camera. <laughs> All right, there we are. We're back in the game. And, uh, well, they're, giving it a, they're giving it a try, they They're really said. testing my production APM here. Okay. So, everyone's ready. Going to have some fun. Puppy says, maybe I swapped, I want Wraith King. Yeah, and pretty pretty easy hero to play with the lag and nah. <laughs> Puppy says, nope, this is impossible. It's starting to feel like this could be post. So it's either, yeah, it's going to be either they try a load, they could try a new server that hopefully, but you got to remember, Secret's rolling with what, Artesian, and I know Zai's not 
American, obviously, but I don't know where they're all trying to connect from for this team. It's like a hodgepodge of different locations. So they might not have good ping on other servers. And if it doesn't work out, they could end up, yeah, taking a rain check on this game, postponing it yeah. to a future date. So it looks like Which is unfortunate for Secret because they had a pretty strong start, you know, with that double that first blood, <laughs> second kill. Wait, are you guys lagging? Oh, well, I guess Artur just woke up from his nap. This is this is not fun. <laughs> Only flow. Why is there ping? I'm trying to look here. Well, everyone for the most part. Oh yeah, it's bad. Two to three hundred ping, roughly. Maybe the smallest being like ninety-nine ping for Kuroki as we speak. Everyone else is in the two hundred, one fifty, two thirty-three. Lag versus lag, go. The classic matchup. Zuf calling it out right here. We're going to get back underway. It's only six minutes into this matchup. I know it feels like it's probably been a lot longer, but it's four to two advantage for Secret, and now they're going to make a go under Wraith King. They pull back his majesty, and they make him take a knee as they will bring him down immediately. Limbo could be next up. Ball lightning forward. Boom! Got him. Double kill for S4. How you doing there, Duza? So on the resume, uh, they get a nice double, double damage up on Storm Spirit, and six to two. They're in great shape. They've given up on this aggro try. Axmo, he's almost level six. They're gonna let Zai find some farm, and this this safe lane is just more than a disaster now. Brew is zero and one only, but he can't even find level six. He's gonna lose his tower before he can find level six. Hard stuff right now. Duza, gonna take that. TP back right now. I actually almost thought he canceled the TP, but he did make it in. Yeah, I mean, and I think this is the right call to rotate supports down and try and protect Zoof, get him something, at mm. least secure his level 6, but now you let this core shaker get a lot of space. As I finding his level 6, he'll get a decent amount of CS. Weaver will get some space too, but you don't really want to let an Earth Shaker just free farm. That can be very scary, yeah. quite potent. Puppy has a couple sentry wards here. Here comes a twister. <laughs> Gotta watch out for it. Okay, he's got two tomatoes on their way, but they're pretty far off. Mm. They might have a go here. No, they'll have to hold it back. He does get a hold of a, a troll right now, so he's got the net to work with here. So Weaver has to be cautious if he is going to be stuck on his own with supports trying to give back up to bottom lane where you got your S4 is now level 7. He's got the robe now, so it could be stopping off for the Orchid on way towards the Bloodstone. And then your Storm Spirit really becomes a bit of a nuisance here. Yeah, I mean, for Orchid, we've talked about it before. It's all about the timing. 20 minutes is that like, yeah, maybe you should have considered something else. 15, you're doing well. Before 15, you are, you're living the dream, basically, as a Storm. You should be able to find a lot of pickoffs at that window. They'll just rotate towards mid. S4 and Arteezy, they group up, and there's a ball lightning forward. Haystrun onto the Shadow Friend, and Undershock should die here. He lives a little bit longer than planned. They find the kill, but Arteezy has to go in deep for it. Gets stunned up by Christy. Is he going to die to the tower shots? He's bottling. He'll live, but just barely. Meanwhile, up top, Axmo dives onto the Shaker, gets another kill on the Kush monster. And all right, kind of a one for one here. Lena for Shadow Fiend, but now the pushing begins. They group up mid, they've got a Wild Wing Ripper, a Dark Troll for those extra skeleton babies. This tier one tower taking a lot of pressure. Yep, certainly is. So following through with a good pick off and an objective thereafter, Secret Gaming. Just kind of showing their cool common collect. A send back to the base now as Puppy will help out Arteezy in saving that bit of extra gold. Puts him back. He's got a Yules now complete. Nine minutes in Nine on your Shadow Fiend. Oh. That is Arteezy setting what we call the standard. <laughs> The new standard. Even Puppy, look at this. Nine minutes. He almost has a mech. He's halfway to the recipe. Pretty incredible um, Chen farm this go around. He'll have another camp here. Utilizing that tornado has really helped his bottom line. Now on the top, Axmo taking some harassment from the Earth Shaker. Maybe just trying to bait here, but he will use the time lapse. Zai suns him under the tower, gives him the totem. No hand of God on Puppy, so he can't help him from global. Oh, he's going to be there. Catches him with the telekinesis. Fissure oh. up in one second. If they oh. can stun him under the tower, it's a kill. I don't know if they have the damage here. They oh. do just barely. The stolen Sakuchi as yeah, well. Yeah, nicely done. Well played by Kuro. The Grand Mag is himself, man, getting it done. Good quick rotation to the top, and Zai dances around the bait. 
you know, forces Weaver like, oh, maybe if I just step back a bit, I can get one quick attack off and finish him off. But now they get on to Undershock here. There's going to be the lift pull back. He gets the LSA off, but can't get away. It's Kuroki now on a killing spree, getting the kill there. Arteezy gets a couple of raises off on the way out. Mm -hmm. And it's a being two for one trade all day as they do lose Puppy. The Shikuchi steal has really been boding well for Kuro. Now he can get very aggressive, scout around, just harass, and really not feel too scared about it. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, S4 finishes off the tier one tower, finds the last hit as Axmo tries to get a little recovery farm here. He's got an urn, Aquila, some good value items, but still doesn't really provide a hell of a lot. Now Limbo caught in the telekinesis, easy set of rays. And it's actually Zai that snipes that last hit with the Fissure. Pretty happy about that. He's been the only one that's really taken the beating for his team this game so far in this top lane. So going with the Soling Tranquil, something we've seen PPD do when he plays his uh, more support Earthshaker. You got plenty of mana to work with, and you get the regen from your Tranquils plus great move speed. But there you can see the dive happening bottom lane, a little bit of harassment onto Axmo. And S4 will promptly pull back as he does not quite have the Orchid yet to really seal back the deal. Back up top, Requiem channeled onto Zoof. There's a slam dunk. Telekinesis, more than enough damage to bring him down. But now the Death Ward, Undershock, dro Undershock drops the Laguna, brings down Arteezy. Now Zai will try to TP home, but it won't happen. He gets interrupted, and it's a double kill for Undershock. Finally, Deuce, they get a nice trade and punish Secret for their aggression. Much needed kills right there. Puppy tried to help out with the Hand of God, but was not going to be enough. They get very, very uh, greedy right there to try to finish off that tier one, getting themselves into a yeah. fight. I wanted to say a nice really net worth trade for Dooza. 1,500, yeah, that's okay, but they're already behind by about 700 and, or 7,500 net worth and nearly 5,000 XP. So it is a little pick-me-up, but a long way to climb still, before they start. Really at this point in the game, to have that much of a boost on Secret, even after losing that fight, so it's a yeah, big deal. And now the mech is coming out on Puppy, so they're ready to continue this five-man and keep the tempo high. And S4 is going to have his Orchid pretty soon. He's already got one Oblivion Staff, got the rope for the next one. I imagine things are not going to be slowing down. Once he gets this Orchid, he will just go on a tear, trying to get quick picks, taking down your Weaver, taking down your Witch Doctor, taking down your Lena. The only one who can really hold their own, your Wraith King and your Brew, who have their ultimates to try to stay alive. But if you're using these ultimates in a defensive way, then you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. They're going to rotate bottom. Looks like they want to kill Axmo. 2-1-1 one one on the Weaver. No, maybe not. They'll just go right into Roche. Okay, smart play here. They know that Dooza don't really want to fight in the pit. They can avoid it. Uh, they'll be able to bring it down pretty quickly. Presence of the Dark Lord makes this a lot easier. Meanwhile, S4 up top just looking for a deny on this tower. And oh, misses it. Whoop, a little miss time there from S4. Whoops. Not a big deal, but a little unfortunate. Oh, LSA's there. Careful. He's going to obviously make the small jump. Under Shock, not going to get that one easy. Not without a Yules. So, still space created though, S4 just trying to bait him a little bit. Keeping one on the map makes this Roche play a lot less obvious. Goes down, Shadow Fiend gets the Aegis, and does a go. Oh, wow. Didn't see that coming. Axmo stunned up in the mid. Long range ball, Lightning Shikuchi soon to expire, but not soon enough. Oh, Zai is going to walk right into Limbo. Do they actually have the damage to bring him down? There's your stun from Flo. Oh, time out. Play on. Zai's dead. Well, nothing Zai could do about that one, walking up to the high ground. Not expecting the opposition to be there ready and waiting. And they've got ward coverage as well as a sentry. Nice pickoff. Nice pickoff, indeed. Nice. Very nice. So, 7 to 11. Duza know that they are on the back foot a little bit here as Secret were able to finish off that rush. They now have Aegis in tow. And they can kind of control the tempo of this game. So, even though the Aegis was acquired, Dooza, they're like, well, let's pressure mid lane and maybe see if we can get a tier one tower while Puppy can't not see anything. Yeah, some of these pings are pretty poopy. Nobody in the double digits even. The lowest ping is like 130. Yeah. Now, Kuro's actually got 100. I think he's got the best ping here, but yeah, this is tough. This is, uh, I don't know if it's just a beat server or if all the servers are having issues right now. Hmm... Puppy says he shall try to restart. I cannot see anything. It's not game. It's pretty important you know. to see stuff when you're Chen, mm. you know? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Axmo, I'm not sure what he's asking him here. You know? <laughs> you know, man? Just the generic, you know. 
It says it's not game, but I don't know if I agree with that. Hard to Might say. I mean, we, us personally, if we've been dropped out of this game at least yeah. three times now, yeah. so it's not just Puppy having issues for sure. And of course, we're on different continents, different sockets, all this kind of stuff. So I, I would, I would wager it is not just an, an issue specific to Puppy, but I don't know. Maybe there's some sort of routing issue from where he's located right now. Who knows? I'm not a networking expert. That's what the cyborgs for. Now Kuro DC. So as I already said, you've been playing uh, a bit more of the ranked games behind the scenes. How oh, they Jesus. how they've been going. Right, well, I guess we should switch back to our faces here, since it's going to be uh, <laughs> probably a, another girthy pause. Ah, oh, I'm going to sit up straight. It's been going terribly. Although the last couple games has been a little better. Man, my my pubs have been awful, and I'm not one of those people that is really into like, man, my stupid teammates. They keep all the people that complain about solo queue not being fair. It's solo queue. It's not supposed to be fair. You got to deal with four randoms on your team up against five randoms on the other side. But I feel like there's just been a huge increase in the amount of games where somebody DCs early on, somebody rage quits at 15 minutes. The amount of the lower I get, the higher frequency of abandons there are. Which is not something I was quite expecting. Yeah, I mean, I've, I'm talking about difference. Of like it works both MMR. ways too, because like, like I feel like I'll go into like an 80 minute game somehow and ends up being a loss. So you hate your life. Those then. are frustrating. And then you go into the next yeah. game and you finally have a stomp, but you stomp so hard that someone abandons at like eight minutes in. And you're like, Fuck. that wasn't satisfying at now all. Now I got I my win. And win. It, uh, yeah. yeah, I just yeah. played 80 minute game and now I have to play an eight minute one with my yeah. win and just nothing. The, the biggest gripe that I have with solo queue pubs is trying to communicate to my team in the like anywhere from like the three to four K bracket the sense of urgency that is like one of the biggest knowledge gaps and people are pretty good at farming they know what the heroes do they understand the general strategy but i often find my teams falling into that trap where you're ahead by maybe like 10k 15k around that 25 30 minute mark you're doing well the other team has some more carries and your team's like oh we're great let's just sit back and farm and we already won basically yeah. we got a triple kill let's yeah. go back and farm and trying to explain to them like guys we need to break high ground they have two midases they have a life yeah. stealer let's, they've got an invoker we're not gonna win the late game <laughs> it's 25 minutes in we haven't taken down a tier one yet let's yeah. do something well like, even if you take in tier one towers like you at that if you have an aggressive team against a team with carries you need to have some racks down by 30 minutes that is just like a really good rule of thumb that's about the time the carries will start to take over if they have you know decent farm and commuting communicating that to my team is just not impossible i don't know it always the oh, just, just let me get my bkb i'm like every minute we wait is a minute they're getting stronger than you i love hearing about the problems mm. from people with high mmr they yeah. hop into the game and they're like listen what you gotta do is just tell them your mmr right off the bat and they'll respect you i'm like i mean first off yeah, we would all of laugh all, at you. i can't do that they're like hold on a second here <laughs> there <laughs> there it is i'm mid i'm mid <laughs> I'm like, Put that in your pipe and smoke. I mean, puppy. to be honest, if I'm in a game and some guy's like, listen, I'm 6.5K, I'm like, dude, do whatever the hell you want. You yeah. tell me what to do, I'll be there. Dude, even if anyone in my game ex exclaims confidence, so like, I'm a really good invoker, let me go mid, I go, all right, if you say you're good at it, by all means, man, I'm happy. I like supporting too. That's my other. I like to play yeah. Dazzle, and there is. There are a few things more frustrating than when I'm Dazzle, and I'm like, go, and my guy gets to half health, and then he starts to run away. I'm like, I don't know if you understand what I can do, but I can save you yeah. very well. They don't have any armor. You see that weave debuff? It's like half duration. You can three-shot him. Just run in. I got your back, bro. And they, you know, maybe they played with some shit Dazzles. They don't trust them. The same thing happens, though, with, like, Omni Knight. Like, I'll play, like, a good amount of Omni Knight, because he's, like, he's, a, he's a good MMR farmer, he let is. me That's tell you. That's what Slacks told me. He's like, you yeah. want to climb your MMR, yeah. pick Omni Knight. It's I really two games. The problem is, is that then your your cores and carries, they're like, we're, we're winning. Yeah. And then they go off and fight. And I'm like, guys, the reason you're winning is because we have Guardian Angel oh, yeah. to like save your ass in these fights. So they go and they die. Uh, and they're like, what's happening? Why are we afraid? I'm like, because I'm like, I can't run that fast. You're yeah. just like, let's go. I'm a slark. I'm going to blink, pounce, dive. And I'm like, guys, wait up. I can't get this Guardian Angel and anything off. And obviously, I've been pretty selfless. I'm, I'm yeah. not, I can't throw together an Agnums right now. But. Yeah, that's my my biggest headache with playing Omni Knight is convincing my team to group up. I'm like, guys, really? We can, oh, are we going to go here? Okay, we're going to play. All right, enough of our small pleb MMR All right. problems. All right, good. I'm glad we're back in it here. Let me get our. Stupid uh, cast. You're talking about how they got trenched here and I'm 8K Reddit MMR. Yeah, I know. I know. Nobody likes hearing our stories. So they are going to micro the micro master. Puppy is DC'd. Secret offered to resume. And, uh, well, we'll see how this works out. Secret, they're holding on to this big lead, feeling confident here. Ooh, ooh, undershock. He's invisible. S4 smoke gets broken. They know there's something nearby. Do they have any detection? Sentry wards? No, they don't. Aegis is on Artor. Don't forget, Spirit Bomb onto the, uh, the Brewmaster. But they juice S4 with the laser. 
Now the follow-up is here. Christy maybe in some trouble. Axmo goes down straight away. Big dunk on the backside. And now Mr. Steal Your Girl. That'll be the end of the Aegis. Christy comes back to life from the reincarnation. Maybe, Ooh. just maybe they can go for it here. They can. Wraith King's down. Puppy now getting uh -oh. focused. They're using him to bait. Axmo comes back in. He bought back for this. Can they bring oh, him down man. once more? Puppy goes down to the urn of all things. Now the Cushmaster falls to the Death Ward. Puppy not the DC'd. clean fight that Secret wanted. He's been DC'd. He never came back. Was he not there? I mean, someone no. was controlling the creeps very well in the back line to keep probably, some lockdown. It was probably Zai. I'm yeah, not someone lie. was doing it. As I soon mean, as Zai died, it's like, all right, guys, I got puppy. Don't they worry. were keeping Limbo the Witch Doctor in check along with Undershock and Lena. The problem is, is there wasn't a fall with the lockdown, but S4 is now making it go into Axmo here. Jumps back, jumps forward, gets the kill. There's it's going to be Kuroki moving in. Secret kind of showing, like, hey, we can do this with four. No yep. problem. Nicely done. Okie dokie. So, an awkward fight, but Secret do find the advantage at the end. A very small one at that. And forcing the Weaver to buy back, and then he dies again. That really hurts his economy. So, can Secret win this 4v5? I think so. With this lineup, they've got some pretty serious momentum, but they'll have to try and close this one out, of course, sooner rather than later. Once Zoof gets a Blink Dagger, things will get a little more difficult. He's about halfway there. Chen has reconnected, but we'll see how long Puppy can hang around. People who uh, put a lot on the bets for Secret, knowing it could have been an easy result. Maybe a bit nervous about these DCs, but top lane, Undershock, the one who should be a bit nervous, getting caught out from S4. But a turnaround, Yule slams down the LSA with the Laguna Blade follow-up, gets the kill, and now an Unleash of Fury comes Ooh. out from Arteezy as he dominates with the Requiem right there. Yeah, one for two, maybe one for three. Weaver in the Yules. Nope, follow-up's not going to be there. Mega kill streak gets ended, though. The Shadow Fiend picks it up as he kills the Lina. So he'll get a nice net worth gain for himself. Yeah, almost 1k worth of gold. All of a sudden, Arteezy has a Blink Dagger and another 2400 gold to play around with. But Puppy's back. Maybe not seeing anything, but maybe his team can make the community age call, and he'll have to do the Ray Charles Chen this game. Try to make the best of it for now, but now Secret with their full five-man squad up and at the ready here. They're still up and ahead. 17 to 11. Early look at the net worth. You can see that they're up by about 7,500 gold, and the items start coming together, and it's time to go, boys. We got the smoke popped out. Secret blaze their way towards the other side in hopes of maybe a pickoff here in the top lane with the rotations coming out. This, this, this could this be, master. yeah, this could be bad. Dire Vision, here you go. They see a few of the heroes. They see at least three. Now they see four as it gets revealed. Axmo shows himself the cast, doing a lot of work onto Kuro and Zai. Kuro forced to retreat right away. Blue splits come out. Rubik goes down. And I think Secret were hoping for just a wraparound onto the Brewmaster. Little did they know that Dooza were ready for it. They had all five heroes nearby ready to rock and roll. Now Puppy will get left behind, put up in the Yules, brought down, stunned up, and now he is put six feet under. Two for nil going the way of Dooza. But S4 is split pushing, so maybe this is not quite worth it, but he will have an Orchid coming out pretty close to that 20-minute mark, actually. Yeah, you could just tell. They were hoping to get an easy pick on the core there in the bottom lane. But those TP rotations coming in from Dooza, I don't know if they premeditated it or what, but it's certainly worked out in their favor. They get the upper hand here in the top lane, bottom lane, though. S4 has been split pushing, adding pressure towards this tier two. He's got two Oblivion staffs, Orchid about complete. And then he can look to keep on going forward. Wow, jump forward. Hey, nice rune you got there. It's mine now, S4. Rune alert. From the bottom lane. Makes a long jump to get a hold of it. Up top, they're going to go on to Undershock here. Arteezy sets it up, but Flo nearby with a Wraith Fire Blast. Fissure stuns up Aftershock. I meant to say Undershock. There's after, there's all sorts of shocks here. All right. Artur does not steal the girlfriend yet. And he'll head back to safety. This Lena, boy, she's getting scary here, Dakota. 1k gold away from that Aghanim Scepter. Yep. Second in net worth only to Arteezy on his Shadow Fiend. The big outlier here are the supports. The secret supports have a lot more farm. The core shaker was really far ahead. Now the uh, witch doctor is starting to catch up a little bit. And of course, that Chen's still very far ahead. He's even ahead of the brewmaster at this point. And, uh, well, Kuro, he's even ahead of the Chen. He's turned into a, more of a core Rubik here playing the three. It's been a hard game for Zai. At, oh, look at Kuro. He's going to an Ags here. No blink dagger. Ags first item. And he's also just one piece away. 
And so what does he get from that? Brew split ultimate works nicely. Ooh. Lena, Luna obviously. Blade Death Ward. And the Death Ward. This is a pretty good Ags game, I have to admit. And you get that super long range. We can't forget. Yeah. It's not just about the Ags upgrade, but getting that big range. But is it more important than amazing. mobility, or do you feel like that's just like a bit of confidence? Like, we're getting so much goal and so much farm, I'm going to get an Ags first. I think it's a combination of they already have Blink Dagger initiations, so he can kind of sit back. You get the huge range, mm -hmm. and that's true. this is the greed you're building. If you need Rubik to initiate, you go for the Blink. If you have someone else to do that, and he can sit back and just capitalize on the spell steals. I think yeah. it's a combination of having Blink Daggers, and also this is a particularly good game for an Ag. Yeah, if it was something like there were Tidehunter or Enigma Black Holes, then I, you probably yeah. put a lot more in the positioning of being able to take spells like that. But exactly. this one, you probably know exactly where the Death Ward's going to be coming from. Plus that Mid lane, Yule's, Stun, Laguna, Hand of God going to be there. Maldic to follow it on up, but with the Fissure coming through from Zai. That makes for a good escape right there. And yeah, Maldic comes a little too late. Nicely yeah. done, though. Good all heal from the Chen. And Invisibility Rune will keep him okay for now. Arteezy going for a Scotty here. Looks like he just wants to beef up. Smart build against the Lina. Knows a BKB won't save him, so he's just going to go raw stats and try and survive the burst damage as he did there. Hope you're not going to give Arteezy the mech, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe because he's invis, but might need to consider healing him here if they want to make an engagement. He actually... He bottled... He just sends him back. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, he bottled Puppy and sent him back. Yep. So he could always TP back to the bottom lane and... Yeah, or mid lane, rather. TP mid. And be good to go from there, so... So Secret will slow things down a little bit, holding on to the lead they've carved out for themselves. We'll see what that timer is on Roche, but they should be able to control the next one pretty easily. They've got a good Roche lineup. It'll be a fast respawn of only about 20 seconds past the initial timer. So if that is what they're waiting for... Could end up voting very well for Team Secret. Still haven't seen S4 do too much with this Orchid, but I think that's more a credit to Dooza, not giving Secret any undue opportunities. They've stayed pretty tight. The buddy system is in full effect here, and Secret not, not able to run over them like uh, some people thought they might be able to. You can always chalk it up to server issues and lag delays at the start, but... Fact of the matter is, is, Secret should be able to still hold strong here after their early boost. That's we're dancing really with them, but, fight, but yeah, no, they Can't definitely deny. are. Undershock, gonna he get scouted so out. Takes out the wave. Here. I guess he didn't see Zai, so Zai moves in oh. on the back of a Yule setup, and there's that return Yules, but it doesn't matter. And even a dunk. Just Great a, play from Zai there, though. Artur did not have it timed perfectly, but he comes in. He's got the totem, so no way Lena could do that double Yules like you were talking. I think about. Lena was just like blind, did. like she was just blinded by the lane. Walked right past Zai without seeing yep. him. Now on the bottom, Christy in some trouble. Great King is level 11, so he does have an ultimate here. S4 brings him down the first time. Support is inbound. Kuro and Artur on their way down. And yeah, Wraith King definitely going to fall. His team smokes up to try and come rendezvous, but it won't happen. Blink Daggers are plenty. One on the Brewmaster now and one on the Earthshaker. Feels like Dooza are just surprised by Secret being able to strike all over the place. Arteezy was just top lane helping take down Aftershock, and then quickly he's there bottom making it happen. It's a testament to having still a couple of these tier 1 towers to easily have access in TP2 and Dooza just need to be able to get some picks or make a big fight happen for themselves and follow it up with some of the objectives. So but it's going to be a while. Has the completed mech. Now he goes point booster for the Ags, but he's got a ring of regen sitting at home. I wonder if he'll make a pit stop for the force staff just to give his team a little extra mobility. Centaur army charging in. And now S4 DC. Okay, <laughs> quality servers Dyer's we've got here. I'm seeing the slideshow myself. But they're gonna they're gonna play on it. Looks like maybe they ran out of pause time or what. But yeah, I definitely I see the blips, the hiccups. The yeah, Yeesh. I see, I see him. Well, we'll have to make do for now. It's Dooza noon. Spell we'll steal now. Okay, look at the just look at the range on this though. It is just look how far back he can sit. It's actually ridiculous. That agonim is a Rubik. Two seconds. Huge cooldown. range. Ridiculously small cooldown. Arteezy almost sandwiched mid. Blinks out before Undershot can get off the Yules. Dudes are still grouped up hunting around the jungle. They're staying alive because of this, but it's also limiting their farming. Weaver forced to go BKB as his first Ooh, Limbo oh, going to be caught. Fissure yeah. sets it up. Jump forward from S4, who's back from his DC. But they don't get the kill. Oh, lag continues here. He like, Artur's laughing. He's like, yeah, that's a freebie. <laughs> oh, and very unfortunate. Axmo comes in, scouted out. Zoof right behind him. There's a level 2 dunk available on the Shaker to show off his Blink Dagger if need be. He TPs out. 
Meanwhile, S4 getting stalked by Axmo. So going on to Undershock. It looks like S4 should be able to clean up this kill. Yep, finds the Lina. Now on the other side, Courier flying in. That's a dire courier. Never mind. As for Arteezy, he gets the Yule's mid lane, goes toe to toe here with the Wraith King, who does not have the ultimate up, needs 20 more seconds, unleashes the Requiem. Big damage, but he's eating all that damage from the Death Ward. It's going to get canceled finally, but the damage has been done. Arteezy goes down a three for one trade. Kuroki trying to get away, gets a rock to the back of the head here, and now Axmo should clean up, jump in, oh. comes out from Zai, gets the stun, gets the kill. And now on the other side of it, it's just Zoof that's alive. He goes back into Panda form after the split, and he will be the lone survivor. The Death uh, Requiem from Arteezy doing a lot there. Secures him a double kill. And you look at this recap. Doesn't include the Lina, but still a, a decent gain for Team Seeker. Another successful fight. They could look towards Roche off the back of that, but they have not scouted it out yet. Radiance middle tower is I'm surprised. Attack. They managed to be able to push down both the mid-tier one and the bottom-tier one. Roche is definitely something that they could look to do here in the near future. In fact, it's pinged at this moment from Puppy. So it's definitely on the docket as they could just simply keep the creep pressure here. Bottom lane's already pushed very far forward. They have a very nice aggressive ward to see if any movement from that bottom lane heads towards the Roche area. Same for the mid lane. They have that covered. It's just a matter of getting Arteezy back and alive, moving down there and getting the job done. Yeah, checking in on item progression for both sides. Let's big pick up Dews ahead. Was that uh, Agonims on Lina to upgrade the Laguna? Everyone else still working on their core setups here. Looks like the Brewmaster probably thinking about a BKB. BKB on the way for the Weaver, but still a couple hundred gold short from that recipe. Meanwhile, you've got a Scotty up on Artor. Four staff on the way for Zai. S4 moving into a Bloodstone, it looks like. It actually almost has the Soul Booster. Secret finding a lot of item progression here. I'm curious what Wraith King is saving up for. I don't know if it's a Midas to catch up or a Blink Dagger for positioning. A Radiance to just all of a sudden become a core. <laughs> it's going to be a Blink Dagger. So he's okay. got the Blink. Good. Yeah, he's he's been farming okay. Especially given that he's a support. He has a surprisingly high level. Finding level 11 this early on. Well... He's, he's been 11 for a while. When he found it, it was, it was pretty good. It's a nice thing when you're a Wraith King as a supporter or a Badden is that you have those kind of ultimates where you know you'll stay alive for the majority of a fight. So mm -hmm. you'll be there when the kills happen and yeah. you'll be part and of you're, the you're XP. You're almost never that first target. Either, yeah. So you know, other point. supports you get picked off early and then you never get any part of the XP pie. But Wraith King and Badden, these heroes, they definitely can. Yeah. So it's a smoke from Secret around the Roche pit. Looks like they'll go for a pickoff before they try to move in uh, and take the big boy himself. Chen Creeps leading the charge. Nice spread here. You've got a Thunderclap. You've got a Hoof Stomp. Then you've got that Damage Aura from the Alpha Wolf. Uh, not going to find what they're looking for. Secret will just start to back out and uh, control their high ground around the pit. You see Dooza all grouped up playing very cautiously here. Shadow Fiend now DCs. What on earth? Yeah, there's like frantic pings happening inside the base. Don't really know what's happening behind the closed doors of the Secret play right now but trying to make the best of it here Get your tinfoils hats mid lane they make the jump onto lena immediate self yules under shock gonna get pulled in here from the vortex jump forward and well lena gets brought down axmo shows up blink in stun will connect on s4 but they kind of half commit for that and now your rayfire blast is going to be stolen from Kuroki. So they end up giving a, a little bit more there after already losing their Lina. Yeah. With Lina down, maybe Secret have some options in the Roche pit. BKB now picked up by the Weaver, but there's initiation down bottom. Zip forward right onto Zoof. He does have a split. Now the team will come in. S4 in some trouble, but we'll be able to zip around and make the best of it. The Death Lord doing a lot of damage. All heal from Chen. They're forced to retreat. The Witch Doctor getting some really key ultimates off this game. Was Kuro able to steal it? No, he was not. Ooh, jump Kuroki. Rayfire Blast. He steals the Death Ward. Can he live? Oh, barely puts it down, but it's not going to be enough. They are starting to swarm past the tower. They get the Cyclone on the Puppy. Puppy, Rayfire Blast connects. He buys Nowhere to he go. Oh, hello. The Kush Monster. Jumps in. Fissure follow-up. Takes Wraith King down, but it's just his first oh. life. Now Zai's got nothing. Arteezy is back, but not in the game, but his hero going oh, to town right man. now. Requiem, and they can't quite follow it up. Way over commits for that. He dives into the tier three to try and get Puppy. S4 comes back and just destroys him. 
That was not the play from the Brewmaster there. Really wanted that Shen. And Puppy stays alive. That's a big gain for Team Secret. Utilizing the Shadow Fiend pretty well here. He's got 3,600 gold. Fartizi's able to reconnect. He'll have a, a pretty penny to his name and will continue to keep farming quite big. Is he able to reconnect? Is he definitely in? Is it a disconnect bug maybe? Or is... It's hard to say. I, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't put it past these servers. It could be a graphical bug. Maybe he's here. Yeah. It's it's really hard to tell, yeah. frankly. I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat and say maybe people are trying to take advantage of the crazy odds favorite and they will... They are attacking secret. Mm, maybe if they're not there, I'll win this value bet of this 96 to 4 yeah, odds. But, but, I mean, it's not like it's it's a freebie. Dota 2 Lounge will cancel bets if there's tomfoolery about or, you know, a series gets canceled or there's some really strange lag walkover. It's not like it's a set in stone like, nope, I definitely get my rares. They, they have some, some judgment there for dealing with situations like that. The reason I would say I think Artur's not here is because he hasn't spent any gold yet. Maybe he's pulling mm. it up for something big, but that's the telling key. You can't buy items for people when they're DC'd, so... Yeah, I it's, it seems like maybe he's being controlled from his team to just farm in the jungle until he gets back. And now Puppy's DC'd. Oh he's closing in on the Agonims. He's 100 gold away. Who's... <laughs> Shadow um, Blade. Secret, this is like the serious handicap here. How many DCs can you play with and still micro your team? I oh wish if goodness. only. What, what would it be like to be a fly in the wall on the secret uh, team speak server or whatever right now and just hear. Probably them. a lot of anger and angst. Ugh. About having to muscle through this, which I understand their, their potential frustration with this issue, but there's only so much you could do from this perspective, and, well, yeah. you gotta make do. They still have a 12,000 net worth lead, about a 14,000 experience lead, so still very far ahead. You mentioned that Shadow Blade on Undershock. They move into the Roche Pit. And I'm not sure that Cedar can contest this too easily with two dead. They might have to hand this Aegis over. Shadow Fiend reconnects. Quick, Arteezy, buy your items. Quick, but while you have oh, a chance. Like, whoa, 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 suddenly I'm 5k. Insta AC. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's good, though. If, as long as you can keep cycling in and reconnecting, at least you can spend the gold. That is actually like a... But I can't believe we're discussing the DC meta right now of like how to <laughs> how to get the most out of your DCs. Roche goes down to the Radiant though. Lena's the one to grab the Aegis. Well, steps in the right direction for this Radiant team. Yeah, they get to walk away and uh, get a bit of an extra purse right there and an extra life. And secret though, they have to deal with their connection issues. They're gonna make the best Whoa. of it. Long jump coming in from S4 on a mid lane, instantly blows up and squishes the little bug. And now they look to open up here onto Undershock. Jump in, but now comes Zoof. Zoof moves forward. They get the kill. Laguna Blade helps it out as they end up trading one for one. All right, pretty good trade. Of course, you trade a support for a core, but that is a big street going yeah. to Melina, who's already pretty damn farmed. She's. Climbing up the ranks, still not really up to snuff with the Shadow Fiend, but she's getting there. Speaking of Shadow Fiend, you just have that Assault Cross now, and ooh, a double damage in the bottle. Big grab for them. As they yeah. step back, Duza though, they don't want to be picked off at this point. They should be comfortable with having the upper hand as they have the Aegis to work with now, but... Still have to be cautious not to kind of hand anything over for free, especially to S4 here. Who is definitely on the prowl? But mid lane, Kuro stun. In trouble. Telekinesis on the undershot. Can he still live here? Laguna up in one second. He actually doesn't have the man. Now he's for got it. it. Now he's got it. Oh. oh, now he doesn't. Okay. Yeah, Lena's at that stage right now where she doesn't have a huge amount of int items, so mana is actually a big concern for her. The Laguna Blade takes nearly half of her mana pool. That's pretty hard. So there's going to be a secret sandwich down bottom, though. S4 needs to be careful. Tower goes down and is denied by the Weaver. This cask has fallen him into oblivion here, but he TPs out. S4 knows his limits. Makes it out okay. Back to base he goes, but they are able to at least finish off the tier 2 tower. Nicely denied, though, from Dusa. We'll leave one last outer tower there in the mid lane. You can kind of feel that secret with what time they got. They want to quickly pressure all fronts and just kind of quickly take the objectives. End this game <laughs> when they can. Yeah. Get through this rut. Yeah, this is this is definitely one of those games where you just you buckle down, you just try to make the best of it, stay positive, and do everything you can to take an edge and end this one sooner rather than later. Um, I don't know if Secret get upset here because of connection issues, there will certainly be some some backlash. So it's it's not fun for anyone, but 
I don't know. This is a tough cause. We talked about we're not the admins here. We're not quite privy to the the behind the scenes discussion about what what uh, goes into the decision making of you know a whole team having connection issues and what the official Starlighter rules are. So we're we're about as clued in as you guys are. Just trying to make the best of this situation and make your four v five experience as entertaining as possible. We're so, going to keep all arms in the vehicle at all times. Yep. Exits. Be located possibly behind you. Uh oh, Undershock. He needs to find that exit sign. He's got the Shadow Blade, but still needs to be careful. Is there any detection on the Dire? They do have Sentry Wards, and there is a gem up on the Earth Shaker. So Luna actually needs to be very, very careful. So let me step back and wait for now. Secret, do look to come together here. Do they have a smoke on hand possibly to kind of make something out of this? Doesn't look like it. They'll wait for now, but. They got the items they've been waiting for here. I mean, Zai even Except blink the and force. Puppy. They wish they could buy it. He yeah. wants them. Ugh. Agnums would definitely be nice. If he can pop in, get it complete, at least this team can utilize it a bit effectively from even the fountain. Well, see you later, Artur. Glad you can come by for a little while. He's now out. Shadow Fiend on uh, autopilot here, bottom lane, as he will push the lane down. Duza, I wonder if they see these DCs and they're like, we should go make the jump happen on him while we can. Shock. He doesn't have a blink dagger, though, so he has to wrap around with the shadow blade. He's in a really odd spot here in the tree line. Yeah, he can make it happen if they do show Does he have to LSA the shadow to get out of here? Okay, there is a little path. There we go. Oh, he moved forward. Hopes of getting hold of someone, but they are nearby. I'm going to try to do a oh. sandwich here. The Kush monster. They're moving past into a sneaky spot, which normally this could end up being... Big, but secret are actually yes. not there. They're completely on the other side, and it looks like they're just going to have to separate for now in what was an attempted smoke gank. They keep it here towards mid lane, and they'll start pushing the tempo there as four splits the top lane, and Zai and the well, ghost of Arteezy going to make it work bottom lane. I'm sure Zai controlling both of them down here in the bottom. Somebody's working Dyer's on Puppy. There's some pressure on the tier two tower mid. Undershock, they get initiated on. But Axe on his way in. They're going to go for Puppy, the DC'd one. He takes a Laguna to the face. Now Curl initiated on. Primal Split comes out. They can't quite get in position for the stun. Does blink back to safety. Fisher helps break things up, but it's secret. Playing a little bit of Rat Dodo here down bottom. It's Arteezy. Up top, it's S4. Trying to split their forces. Two TPs home. And they will stop the push, but they lose their Tier 2 in the mid lane. Secret certainly making the best of this. Yeah, this is probably a test or a taste rather of what's to come. If they're going to be dealing with possibly a three versus five kind of a get up, they will split as much as possible and force Duza to not be able to commit as five where they actually have an advantage in numbers in like these big team fights inside the base. They will just keep split pushing as you saw there, forcing a couple of them to pull back and then maybe they could pull back themselves and make their own big fight happen on where Duza were trying to make the push, but it's just theory crafting for now as they try to make the best of it here. 1727, you know, secrets still have their they still have upper a hand advantage. Thousand net you know, worth lead, and so. it's been plateaued there for a little bit, but just based on the fact that they're dealing with a couple of men down, Duza could still obviously just take this game. I feel like if Secret wins this game 3v5, game two should just be forfeit for winning with such a handicap. <laughs> like, not not seriously. Of course, I'm being facetious here, but it's actually insane that Secret are holding on to such a ridiculous lead. It's plateaued at 12k. Well, hold that thought, though. As the fight breaks out, Limbo, Telekinese first. They go on to Axmo. That'll force out his BKB. The cask bouncing around. Yule to try and buy S4 sometime. Limbo will TP out. S4 jumps to the wrong location. They can't punish this. Unfortunate. Nice little cask. AFK in the mid lane. They ping it out. Quick, bring him back to the base. Okay. Shoo. Chen lives. Okay. Yeah, good little cast right there holds him back at the end and well as Duza tries to make something happen towards the mid lane They pull out a couple of rotations here Illusion. To get them back as four makes his return along with Kuroki. They're Anticipating a Duza push, but it's not there. Duza are just gonna maybe play things a bit more slow Pressure the lanes back the other way. Maybe look to finish a couple of tier two towers. Oh, Undershock stun on three. Follows up. Gets the kill on Earthshaker before going down. Kuro steals the Laguna Blade. Eats through his mana pool. But someone has to grab the gem. They do. The kill. They leave Puppy behind. Well, now they bring him in. <laughs> All right, Puppy. Here's your new job. Carry that gem. Well, Yule's on the Brew Illusion. Okay. Not going to be a kill there. 
This is a disconnected. This is a disconnected RTZ. So whoever's controlling him, it's us four though, making the committed jump onto Limbo. Also dancing between Wraith King and Axmo and his Weaver. As far as like this is too much, he gets the hell back. Meanwhile, they leave behind Arteezy, who they're trying to make work. Spirit. Requiem's going to fly on out, but it's not going to be enough to do it. Now he's the one that's going to be used up and should go down thereafter. Ray Fire Blast sets up the stun, and that's all she wrote. Arteezy goes down, ends up being a two-for-one trade all day in advance for Duza. Well, you're starting to see the limitations of what three players can do with five heroes. Even at this caliber of play, you... You just can't folk. You just don't have enough brain power. And well, Duza are starting to claw back in it here. You look at the graph, and that's a big upward swing, getting some of these kills. Oh boy! <laughs> I, mean, oh, I don't know what else to say boy. here. There's only really so much to analyze when you oh, have two people. Yep, they're getting puppy. Not in the game. The ghost of puppy goes down. Yeah, they kill him. Congrats, I guess. Congrats on your DC. <laughs> You killed an AFK chat. Oh, oh. oh the comes out. Kenor, I oh. comes in. Duza getting cleaned up. Oh. AB5. Lena comes back down. She's dead. Now Flo comes back to life, and they say reincarnate this son. It's a two for four. The DC characters were just bait all along. Oh, boy. Oh, next level DC meta breaking out right here. Secret setting the standard for what you need to do, whether it's three versus five, five versus five, whatever it's got to be. That's a near five. 5k net worth trade right back to where they were baby oh yeah they lose their dc ears but the the three that remain in play get the job done and clean up doza lose everyone except their weaver they push it back <sighs> hey roshi's gonna be up in just a moment we'll hey, see if uh, a small clock time that's the benefit of secret Hopefully they he can quickly scout it out. Perfectly, yeah. yeah. If they could scout this out, this would be amazing. They've got wards on the high ground on both sides. Great vision in this area. This is a free Roche. I think this is Roche 3. If I'm, we've been in this game for 41 minutes. I almost can't believe it. It's been going on for so long with the pauses. But this is Aegis and Cheese. And unfortunately for Secret, they won't scout it out. We'll not be able to seize this opportunity. Puppy is up to... 2300 even if they could just get the uh, if he could connect for two seconds buy the ags and then break his computer that would help so much they could just park chat in the well maybe get him level 16 and just spam out the ultimate he's just a mobile fountain at that point yeah they just got to get him in so he can get that agnes <laughs> yeah get him I've in get, get it to go in, yeah. but <sighs> i don't know it doesn't look like it's happening at this point they're not be able to dc now there's clearly just something wrong I don't want to say the D word, but <laughs> they're disconnected. They're I've been through a couple of these in my days. I worry casting, and mm -hmm. I've had to wait many a time. And this is symptoms of something I've seen once before, unfortunately. And when the odds are this dramatic, one side people uh -oh. will do crazy things. S4 getting crazy. Speaking of which, Bottom River tries to go for an isolation play, but the second that trouble comes, he gets the hell out of there. All right, they scout out Roche under shock in the Roche pit. He sees it coming. And all right, they go for the Roshan. This is a big Rosh. Uh, secret. Do they even bother to contest it? It's looking like probably. Not. I feel like at this point, Secret's like, let's just do what we can as far as defense, and if we'll we'll get the most out of our DC players, and then try to follow it up. And if we get the win, then or if we get, win the fight, then great. But if not, then this is this is the hand we've been dealt, and we gotta make the best of it. Lena gets the Aegis here, so Duzo, a sign of life as Secret continue to farm up. Cheese goes to the Weaver. Axmo still doesn't have too much in the way of items. Not except a Mantis style. We'll see a fight break out right in the mid here. Yule's up onto the Earthshaker. S4 doing as much damage as he can. In comes RTZ. That's a Requiem. Brings down the Aegis. They've still got Flow in the front lines. There's Limbo in the back with a big Death Ward flying through. Puppy goes down. Now RTZ gets Laguna and finished off. They take down the Aegis and the Reincarnation, but all five still alive for Duza as they move towards the high ground. And now the siege really begins. Buybacks available on the two DC'd heroes, but I don't think you can buy back for people when they're DC'd. I don't think so either. Weaver DC's now. All right, it's a three on four. Maybe see. Here we go. Here we go. Right back the other way. Crab's coming on in. Another team fight's going to break out. Whoa, Zoop. He tries to TP out. Another big <laughs> dunk there from the Kush monster. They get the Lena. Limbo healing as best he can, but S4, he's got too much damage. Damage. He'll best the good doctor. He goes down. Reincarnation up in 20 seconds. I don't think he's going to last that long. Let's not kid ourselves. Christy, 
Bam! Chris Christie style. Take it out. I don't think they recognize that Axmo disconnected. The Weaver just casually did the DC walk back to Fountain that whole time. <laughs> and then they just finally realized, like, oh, he's not here. Oh, shit. Our Weaver's gone and we can't pause. Hmm. Oh, Probably boy. Probably should have passed that cheese to someone else. Oh, no. Now he's stuck with the cheese. Oh, that man. Sucks. For the cheese and 2K gold as it will be farmed up even further, it looks like. This is secret secret team three task force here going against now the four hit man squad of Duza as this game just beginningly this this, this is, is a hot this mess. This game is the definition of clown shoes. This is just Put a hot mess. Put on your mess. clown shoes, get in that little car and drive into Clown Town because that is that is the capital city. This is like it's clown shoes a circus where the big top has like rusty poles <laughs> that are caving in on each other. It's like a circus that doesn't even have an elephant. It's not even a circus without an elephant. No. I like I, what is happening here. Mommy, the animals don't look happy in those cages. No, I feel bad for the elephants in the circus. They've got a shit life. <clears throat> and I now I'm getting the the, the slide. Yeah, we're getting the jitters here. Great. Oh god. Uh, Quality. Soon one of, one of us will DC and we have to do a solo cast. This yeah. is you know, I was going to stream after this today, but see how this game is going. I don't even know if I want to. This has just demoralized me in, in Dota 2 for the day, I feel like. This is a hot mess of a server. Oof. Woo. So, graph, yep, still pretty good for secret. <laughs> Let's go back to the graph. I mean, I, I, when, when all else fails, I'm you just really look at the graph. Of, like, things this is how it feels here. like, oh, don't mind that the Dota's jumping around like little pictures here. <laughs> I mean, is it even worth analyzing this? Can we call in, like, a... I feel like we need a third wheel co-caster here. Like, we, we need the, the DC expert to give us the breakdown on... Okay, so when you're playing 3v5... What, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? This is one thing I have not asked players about in my interviews, so I'm, I'm not really sure what... Uh, now both teams are suffering through it, so it's... I mean... And of all the heroes for dudes that'll lose... I mean, lose. Shadow Fiend's just invisible right now. Look at my... Like, what is this shit? I'm getting the same stuff Puppy had. Oh, He's on not me, smoked. On me, I, I... What the hell? On my monitor, I see the Shadow Fiend there. The entire Dire team has disappeared for me. Oh my god. God. I can't even click on the <laughs> mini map. On my screen, S4 is transparent. He's not yeah, in this, is... but he's transparent. Dude, I can't click on the mini map. It's not doing anything. What is this shit? Did you lose sound too? No, sound. No, sound. It's trying as best it's can. It best it's can. It's chugging. Maybe you should just try. Should it. I oh, just no, he's back. No, he's back now. Oh. I mean, I've got nothing. If I can't click on the mini map, there's no point in me even doing camera here. Let me. Just... Like no one can pause. I wonder if everyone's playing with this lag right now. So let this me just is... try to reconnect here. <clears throat> Well, I'm watching from in the game. It's still a slideshow, but top lane, it's under shock, does get stunned. It's Radio Dota happening at its best right here as Ush turns the corner. Undershock stuck in a corner. Tries to light strike array himself out of here with the hands of Brew, but they end up taking each other out. The Lena falls, and so does S4. Kuroki's still here, dancing a bit alongside with Zai. It ends up being just a one-for-one -one trade. On the other side of the world, bottom hey, lane. we're back. They're making it go with Arteezy. Arteezy tries to right-click Limbo, but he gets blown up under the hands of the Wraith King and the Brew. Limbo barely, al barely alive, makes it out in a way, gets his BKB. Storm Spirit buys his boots to travel. Okay, so we're back. Looks like that reconnect fixed all of my woes, but I don't really know. Is what's it smooth going on for you? Here. Yeah, it's buttery smooth now. I, yeah, I can see all my heroes again at least. That's good. So it's a two for one, I guess. Two cores for the Shadow Fiend. Is that what happened in that fight? Dude, the DC Dartesia almost has 400 CS. He's still farming pretty damn well. Oh, here we go. Initiation to the base. They find the Doctor Dunk from Zai. Kuro sets it up, and all of a sudden you got a 4v2 on the field. And they move to the it's high ground. 4v1.5. Yep. <laughs> Bottom lane. Yeah, they're moving in. Oh, Wraith King going to get silenced up. Does have reincarnate. So even taking him down is going to take a lot of muscle power here. They're going to be Axe using the DC Axmo here. And S4 is just making space, though. They're getting barracks up top secret. Might oh be able to God, do this. Like, how are they doing the this? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Christy comes in now. Axmo, the two defenders. Lena's up in about five seconds. Split. It's a stolen split from Kuro. That makes some space for the getaway vehicle. And he's just focusing the barracks. He's like, I came for this. I am getting this. I don't know if he has the damage here. Can Kuro do this? He's trying, man. He's trying. He wants to get the one down the melee. He's not going to get it. He's oh, not gonna get it. Spirit he's lead me the damage. way. Oh, seven eight, it. He gets it. Kuro, now he's going to throw away his life, I think. If he can make the escape here. Stolen Laguna. Oh. Gives it to Lena. TP's away. Kuro, the madman on oh. the run, but he gets caught by the Yules. And 
That's a deny. He just commits suicide. Kill yourself. Uh oh, S4, S4 comes jumps in. in. No reincarnation. That's a dead Wraith King. Oh my god. Enzai shows up. What the hell happened here? <laughs> Alright, so they get the melee barracks. I think Secret on the road to victory here. They're still finding plays. The DC Weaver seems to be harboring Dusa more than the two DC cores on Secret. I'm not gonna lie. Weaver did not contribute much in that last fight. All right, denial on the tier two mid. We're out of our to outer towers for the radiant. Hey, Lamau. I don't know what else. This is just. <laughs> oh my God, that's so a Mjolnir a picked up on your storm spirit. Bring in the go. right click. Oh, jump bottom lane. Zoof could be in trouble. He's going to be able to BKB. Still has split as well. They couldn't get the split out. I'm sure that would have hey, been a big look grab. Hey, but... back. Artur Babayev. What's oh, going on, guys? He's like, hey. I'm rich. Suddenly BKB. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. BKB butterfly. Because oh, why not? Oh, man. Oh. That actually... <sighs> I think with with, with Shadowfiend coming back and Weaver being out, it's Secret who have the big advantage now. It is. Now, a 4v4, I, I mean, Secret, they, they have slightly higher skilled players, I, I think is a, a fair statement to make, and they seem to be doing well uh, in terms of their ability to micro. Oh, we also got the HUD updated, too, so no more mountains. That's nice. That's <laughs> the one good thing that's come from all these reconnects. We got the proper HUD. Jesus. That's, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for positives at this point. Oh, my. You know. Oh, see you later, RTZ. It was fun well, while you were here. Glad to see you. <laughs> He's got a BKB now, at least, for his team to use. I feel like he should have just bought the butterfly. I guess he was afraid he wouldn't make it to the secret shop in time, so getting what items he could up top. Limbo. He's going to be isolated, and he'll actually BKB off the Orchid. Does S4 have the damage? The Mjolnir giving him that attack speed, and okay, they pick him off, and that's a BKB charge down. That's a 10-second BKB also. Uh, bad news for the Witch Doctor. Oh, oh the Undershock. He gets dunked. Hit by a totem. Now putting the Yules. Can they get the Spirit Bomb? Oh! No, he BKBs it. Now the Kush Monster takes Laguna. Zeus here. Oh, Arteezy. He's DC, but he gets the kill. Now goes on to Chris. Chris, oh. he's in trouble. He goes down. Zeus, silence. He's got an yeah. ultimate, but can he cast it? I say nay. A three for one in the mid lane, soon to be a one for four. Uh oh, Flo, you might be hearting Christy, but you're in some trouble. You don't have your reincarnation there, little buddy. And Duza with no buybacks available here. Weaver, he's reconnected and confused as to why his team is all dead. Yeah, it's like, what the hell happened here? He's lost everyone, and now they're high ground being pushed in. RTZ's back. He's like, hey, guys, thanks for the win. I'm going to go ahead and clear out the racks now. It's like he comes back goes, oh, cool, I picked up a few more kills. Okay. A few more kills. I can get a few more items. They clear out the racks Jeez. mid lane. They'll get the one racks, and we're done here. And that's Dota, folks. You know, okay. Secret take game one. I have to say, this is probably the most inappropriate game for a GG call. That was the furthest thing from a GG no. I've ever seen. Yeah. That was a bad game yeah. by every day. Definition for I can both think sides. Of. For that everyone. was just. It was three v four for the good chunk of the mid game where the game really mattered. I mean, I have to say, hats off to the players for keeping their composure. Yes. No flame.